is this thing on? Great. How to make the Stark Infinity Gauntlet from Avengers Endgame. Uh, this is made of 20 gauge and 16 gauge steel and a little bit of brass as well. Um, you can make yours out of anything you want. If you wanted to do foam or something like that, that will work for this template as well. Um, but you're going to want to use uh, some information from somebody like uh, Punish Props Academy because um, they're experts on that. In fact, Punish Props, I'm calling you out. I want to see you guys build this thing. Grab your hammers. Let's get started. Get the template to build this yourself for free by clicking the link under the video or in the video or going directly to armortemplates.com where all of my templates are available. Also, if you go to armortemplates.com slash Stark, I have Amazon links for everything you see me using in this video so you can build your own at home just like I did. I cut out all the pieces and beveled the edges. And the center piece here, the knuckle plate, has um, a bit more of a bevel. This is a thicker piece. This is made of 16, 16 gauge steel instead of 20. Um, you could probably do it in 20. It'd probably be a little easier. These little tabs we're going to bend over later on, so don't worry about them right now. Now, while wearing the glove, I've got the hand plate, and I'm putting it on the glove here, and I'm determining where I'm going to be bending it. I'm not going to bend it straight, I'm going to bend both of these at a little bit of an angle to make it fit the hand a little bit better. Here's a piece of exhaust pipe. You've seen me do this before. That's a rawhide mallet that I'm using to kind of convince the edges to move in a little bit better. Here it is, fit against the hand, fitting okay, pretty, pretty good so far. Now this piece has to obviously bend to uh, meet that So same thing, but this being thicker steel is a lot more work. So um, I'm not even sure it was worth doing it like this Probably would do it in 20 gauge if I had to do this again Okay, now I'm fitting the part on there and as you can see it's not quite perfect yet, but it's getting close Here's the van brace the part that goes on your forearm and again, I'm just rounding it on a piece of exhaust pipe. If you go slow, you'll avoid getting kinks in it. And when these two edges meet, you know you've done the entire thing the right way. There we go. Looks good. I'm going to trim these a little bit later on, so don't worry about those being pretty just yet. Popping a couple holes for some rivets. And made a little piece here to... Rivet these two pieces together. All of my rivets are made of roofing nails. Ordinary roofing nails. Put these through and cut them off. And then just hammer them down. At this point, make sure that the hand plate and the van brace uh, have the same curvature and fix that if it if they don't. Uh, this uh, little piece on top of the van brace, I'm not sure what this would be called, little rocket pod thing, um, shaping it the same way. Don't worry about those tabs just yet. Make sure to get it in shape first. And now we can bend the tabs in. And this is what holds it to the van brace later on. This is a piece from a dapping set. If you don't have a dapping set, you can use a, um, a ball peen hammer in a vise. I'm just rounding the edges a little bit to make it a little bit more clean and perfect. A little bit more of a, a, a just a nicer finish than, uh, than just a bent piece of metal using a file to get some of the bumps out. And there you go. Looks like a machine made it, sort of. To uh, make the slots, I did this on my Iron Man gauntlet, by the way. Um, this is a lot, of, a lot of you asked how I got these little slots made. And this is how, just a little uh, Dremel tool uh, with a cutoff wheel on it and just cut into it. I would suggest cutting these after you have shaped the van brace though.
For the center piece here, this is a piece of 1 8 inch uh, steel plate. And I cut that out and started bending it so that it would fit the, um, the hand plate. It takes uh, quite a bit of work. This was actually probably the hardest piece to make. As you can see, it's not, not quite ready yet. And this is how these parts line up. As you can see, all these parts here line up with everything else around it. So you got to really be careful to make this precise. Very precision made piece. For the center piece right here, we are going to use a hammer and just press against it to bend this piece. Give us a nice curve, an even curve in the metal. And then you can see those little marks there uh, at the ends. And we're going to use a brake, or this is called a seamer tool. Actually, I call it a brake sometimes. Um, and just bend those parts up a little bit so that they fit in here perfectly. Now I did notice that it didn't sit flush, so I made a little recessed uh, area here with the Dremel tool so that it sat up in there a little higher. Um, probably not necessary, but I really wanted a precision fit, so I did this. Now I'm drilling holes. You don't have to do this. Um, you could probably glue this piece in or something, um, or both of these pieces in, but I decided to weld some little studs on this thing. Um, you don't have to weld for this project, but uh, this is the, the, the route that I wanted to go. Here I am getting it ready to weld in the vise and just welding that little piece in. And there you go, all welded. We'll just sand those off a little later on and it'll be perfect. Now I'm marking where the hand plate goes or where the knuckle plate goes on the hand plate. And this is the uh, wristband. Um, like most of the pieces, just bent on a piece of uh, exhaust pipe until the curvature is right. This is also 16 gauge, so it's a lot harder to work with than a 20 gauge. And as you can see, I'm fitting the pieces together. Um, as you fit them together, you're, you're trying to figure out where you get a trim because when they come together for the final assembly, you want them to be a perfect fit. So that's why all this is so critical. Here I'm marking where I'm going to drill some holes into both the wristband and the van brace. And I'm going to temporarily connect them just by putting some nails through these holes and allowing it to, to kind of hold it in place. I used five, you can use as many or as few as you like. Now since these pieces are perfectly uh, aligned, I can uh, do some filing and make them perfect, a perfect match. This is a countersink and I'm going to countersink all of these holes. And we will come back to this piece a little bit later on. This is important for later though. I countersunk the, uh, the holes in the hand plate as well, knuckle plate, excuse me. This is called a hammer form. Uh, hot rodders use this actually. It's a very, very old hot rodder trick to make some custom, custom shaped uh, pieces here. It's just a piece of wood that I've cut out the shape I needed and then lightly tap with a hammer. This is 26 gauge uh, steel, so it's very, very easy to, to, to ding and bang up, so be careful with it. As you can see, it's exactly what I needed. Now I've cut out the center piece. This is where the, the center stone goes. And all these pieces kind of go together like this. As you can see, I got some holes back here. This is the piece that goes on the thumb base. Um, all of the finger parts are made this way. Um, some are a little trickier than others, but you just bend the pieces up. And these are all, mostly everything is bent at a 45 degree angle. This is one of the center finger pieces. And there you go. File it, make it a little bit uh, 
more of a perfect edge there. The fingertips are a little bit trickier to do just because it's hard to get the tool in there, but it's doable. I'm bending over the little part that goes under the finger and then giving it a little bit of a curve before I finish it off. And as you can see, it's not perfect, so we're going to have to take it over to a chisel in a vise. Kind of a rounded chisel I've got there. I uh, just found it in the garage. And just uh, kind of bang on it until those creases are perfectly lined up. There we go, looking pretty good. This is how the finger plates go together. You know, want to trim that center one as needed. Uh, this little thing I've made is a piece of uh, 1 8 inch steel, and it's just a little form that I made. It's got a bolt going through it, and it's just kind of bolted together. And I made this so that I could use some copper rod and bend it perfectly and evenly five times. And this worked out pretty well. This is for the little surrounds that go around the stones. Cut this off, and there you go, perfect. This is just plain plumbing solder I found in the garage. Uh, same stuff you find at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's. And I'm going to try, this is my first time I've ever tried uh, soldering anything together like this. Soldering for those of you outside the US. I have a very small torch here that I'm heating it up with um, and just using electrical solder actually. And um, it just kind of, it was an experiment to begin with and it, it worked out pretty well. Um, I should have practiced more because this was actually really messy, as you can see. But uh, by the time I got to the thumb, it was uh, actually really easy and pretty perfect. So I should have practiced a little bit, but it's definitely a good way to do this. This is the, the little brass finger plates for in between the fingers. Uh, these are a little bit different shape in the template, so don't freak out if you see a different um, different shape there but I just took a Dremel tool and um, used some little nails to keep this thing uh, you know stationary and then cut some slits in it here I've got a magnet in a vise this is perfect for aligning these things and making sure that the holes are in the exact right spot now I've got a piece of I think it's 1 8 inch um, aluminum just in there as a spacer and this allows me to put the, the little brass pieces in here and mark exactly where these holes go so that these pieces never interfere with each other. It's pretty ingenious little solution if you ask me. Um, this is some vinyl. Uh, I used a, a Cricut vinyl cutter to um, make some, uh, print some little things out and I'm going to do some acid etching here. If you haven't seen my um, acid etching tutorial, make sure to go check that out. So this is the negative is to a piece of metal that's in a solution of salt water and vinegar. And the positive goes to the positive terminal. And then you turn on the power supply and it will etch for you. Pretty easy. Had to be cleaned up a little bit. It wasn't quite perfect, but um, looks pretty good. Now these little nails here, I, I mentioned before that I had countersunk these before. Um, and this is basically uh, how these parts go together. So these are countersunk rivets, which means that they will not be seen at all. So um, just rivet them down really well into the hole. And then once they look kind of like that, all mushroomed out, we're going to take a file to it, get rid of the bulk of the material. And then I took it to a belt sander just to get rid of everything else. And basically, it's a totally invisible rivet. It just looks like, like there's no rivet there at all. For the wristband, I didn't know how to do this very well with the acid etching, so I did it by hand with a Dremel tool. Maybe not the best method, but hey, it works. As you can see, this is the most complicated armor build I've done yet. I was going to build the Antikythera mechanism, but some guy in Australia already did it, so uh, I had to throw all those pieces away. Uh, man, hold on a second here. Uh, hello? Oh, this old Tony already did that joke? 
And does the phone bit too, huh? Great. Here I've got the wrist part uh, riveted on. Now I can fit the centerpiece here on the van brace. Just push this in here and put those tabs over on the sides and it's on there. Just some primer and some paint and these parts are ready to go. Now obviously Painted armor is not a very good idea because some of the paint will come off when the parts touch, but uh, I'm going to call that weathering. <laughs> Here's all the pieces. Now we can start assembling these pieces together. This little center section here, followed by this center section. And just kind of bolt it on, or you might want to glue yours on, not sure how, how you want to go about doing that. Now for these pieces, uh, you're going to need to put them on the fingers while you're wearing the glove and then take a measurement from this hole to this hole. Um, I just found if you just wrap the leather around there and just kind of mark it, um, that's you're going to have to make those little uh, straps there. These are little uh, rapid rivets. And as you can see here, this hammer is an old hammer and I kind of hollowed, out, hollowed it out a little bit with a, a grinder and put some... Uh, electrical tape on it to protect the paint a little bit and I just hammer these down not too tightly but tight enough to hold and make sure that these finger plates can move here you can see the strap is in there that's how these parts are connected all the fingers are made this exact same way and here you can see the straps on the glove and there's a little bit more work on top here. As you can see, these parts are kind of floppy, so we need to do something about that. And I'm, I'm going to take a piece of leather here that I've already measured out. And um, we're going to be gluing it under, on the underside of this right here. And then these little pieces are kind of filling in the gaps uh, when you make a fist with a gauntlet. So this goes on top of the finger plates like this just so it touches over on the edge like that and but of course on this one not on that one just rivet those down in these two holes and then glue the parts on there now this is a uh, leather that I am gluing to the underside of those pieces so that they don't uh, chip the uh, red paint off the other pieces just glue it on there with contact adhesive or rubber cement and then trim it off and then scuff the underside of these finger plates before you glue your pieces on and there you go do that four times and then rivet that directly into the glove in the appropriate location now for the gems um, this is iridescent glass I picked up at the hobby store. A couple of bucks for this. And I'm just uh, putting it on the anvil and uh, putting some cloth over it and then hitting it with a hammer to bust it up some. Careful doing that. I'm actually going to be selling both versions of these Infinity Stones on my website. So if you don't want to go to this trouble to make all this, you can buy them from me. So come to armortemplates.com and check it out. This is Alumalite Water Clear. It's good stuff. And I'm mixing up batches of this. Uh, this batch actually was way too dark, so I had to throw these away, but um, you'll get the idea anyway. So you mix up both parts evenly, and then using a little bit of dye. With blue and yellow and red, you can make all the colors you need. So three drops was way too much. You couldn't see through the stones. So um, I redid this several times until I got it right. Mix them together very thoroughly. And then pour them into the mold around the glass. Now you'll need to uh, sand the rear of the pieces to make them more, make the light more diffused 
Otherwise, it's going to look really silly and have a weird like hot spot where you can see the LED light. Now I'm just using super glue to glue the stones into position. Make sure you get them in perfect order because if you don't, people who watch your videos will totally freak out for no reason even though you have a perfectly good explanation for it. Now I'm using hot glue. You can see I've got the LEDs at a bit of a, an angle here, about 45 degrees. I'm just hot gluing them in position. And this is where you rivet the thumb pieces onto the glove here and here. And you're going to want to run a wire in through here into the glove and out of it. Solder all the red together and all the black together and you're ready to go. Now you can mark the glove for where the rivets go and for the van brace as well. And that's really it guys. Uh, I had a ton of fun making this thing. I know you guys are going to have fun making yours as well. There's a lot of these things out there, uh, very, very inaccurate toys and stuff that are just totally not what's in the movie. Um, but this is pretty accurate to it, and um, you know, hopefully you guys will make some really cool stuff with this. And uh, make sure to send me your pictures, because I want to see them. Thanks for watching. See you next time.